love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello comrades and welcome back to Oshanka Show. Now, today I would like to touch the topic about religion in Soviet Union. After the death of Stalin, uh, Khrushchev kind of renewed the attacks against religion. And uh, one of the things I remember my mother told me the story that, you know, some people um, would attend churches on Sundays, but teachers would wait by the church and beg parents uh, not to take kids uh, into church because the teacher will get in trouble. So the teachers on Sundays will come to church, you know, by the, you know, by the church, and they will offer free uh, babysitting, pretty much. Like, let me have your kids. You know, we'll go for a walk or we'll uh, study or learn, uh, you know, learn something. Just please don't take your kids into the church because if the, the government will find out that uh, my pupils attend in church, I could lose a job or get in trouble. So that's what was going in the village when my grandparents, they had teachers on Sundays coming by the church and taking kids from parents. And of course, since it's a small village, everyone knows everyone. So their parents felt bad and they will let the kids go and go themselves into church. Um, as I said, uh, my grandparents really didn't um, go to church and you know when you peasant uh, a lot of times it's really impossible to attend church on Sundays because you know cows don't really care is that Sunday or Tuesday uh, cows need to be fed and milked you know twice a day no matter what day it is uh, you gotta feed chickens you gotta feed your pigs so my grandma for example uh, she did all the work like on Sunday as every other day except she would never sew anything like she wouldn't, wouldn't touch the needle so that was her thing for sundays she does all the work they needed she maybe kind of ignore the garden uh, but she'll take care of the animals but she won't uh, sew anything there was a you know because they constantly had to fix holes and stuff like that but she won't touch the needle on sundays because there was a kind of like against the rules you don't do that on sunday Another interesting detail about uh, religion out in the country uh, among peasants, like every house in the village had an icon in every room. So for example, if my grandparents had a, a two room house, that log cabin, and every room had its icon in, a, well, I would say in our case, it was a top left corner so that'll be southwest corner and I'm not sure what it was location based on but uh, other houses I recall yeah it's I guess it will be up to uh, owners uh, but that was the thing like if you build a um, new house you purchase an icon at the church and then you invite priest and you pay him uh, money or donate you know goods again and he will bless uh, your new home with the holy water. So he will sprinkle holy water, and then you know they will bring the uh, the icon, and it kind of dedicate the icon to this house. So the uh, saints will be protecting this house from fire and other troubles. So every home I remember that I walked in in that village, they always had an icon in the corner you know, up high by the ceiling, and it will have this special um, handmade uh, kind of like rugs or something. They call them towels, but it's a special uh, towels that is sewn by hand and they decorated by hand. And that will be in the corner and you never touch it. It just stays there. And, you know, religious people, when they come in the house, they will cross themselves looking at an icon. Um, so that was interesting kind of detail. And my grandparents, uh, later, I was kind of naughty when they passed away. I was very curious, so I actually took the icon down and I took it apart. 
I thought maybe it's like some old, rare, uh, expensive icon, but it was made in 1909 or something, you know, DASA, and it looks like it was just kind of like mass manufactured icon product. So I was kind of disappointed. Uh, so I, I put it all together and put it back in the corner. But some people had the really old, expensive, you know, rare icons. So later in the 90s, uh, it was a big thing about people are breaking into these old houses and stealing icons to resell. Another thing I'm kind of, I would say even I'm proud about the uh, uh, Soviet people, um, that we, those religious holidays like Easter or Christmas, they actually were religious holidays. Like people went to church and, um, well, not all of them, but whoever who was religious and they, uh, felt it's important they actually went to church for Easter they went to church for Christmas like there was no shopping whatsoever on Christ for Christmas in Soviet Union it was strictly religious holidays you know people go to church for all night and it'd be all night just singing uh, walking around the church doing all this uh, their magic stuff that I don't understand uh, same for the Easter we will boil eggs and we color them. And of course, you couldn't just purchase some egg colorings like here. Uh, people usually uh, peel the onions uh, skin that, and it makes eggs nice and brown. So that was mostly the colors of the eggs in, in Ukraine, at least just the brown eggs. And then they uh, make, bake that special sweet bread with raisins, Pascha. And it's, you take all that stuff to church and to have it sprinkled with holy water. Uh, so this is kind of cool that I'm really not happy about American being Christmas just pretty much just commercialized. It's all about sales, sales, sales. Uh, religious is like gone completely. It's just hollow. Um, in Soviet Union, uh, that was a real deal. And I remember from when I was a kid, um, there was one holiday in the middle of the summer and I just, for some reason, just cannot recall the name of it, but um, grandma will send me to the river uh, to collect yar. So there was this um, plant growing along the uh, river banks and uh, it's like your house is supposed to be green. And I'm not sure if it's like more like a Russian Orthodox holiday and like celebration or something more like back to well, the pagans days. Uh, but I'll bring a bunch of that uh, yard into the house and my grandma was spread on the floor everywhere. So that was so-called green holiday. Um, and I don't think that there'll be anything going on in church, but that was a big deal. Uh, and of course, there was constantly she would mention today is a such and such saint day. And um, like in August, there was a Saint Ilya day. And I was saying that after that day, you're not supposed to swim because water is too cold. And so they even had the saying, Ilya kupatsa nilzya. So after Ilya holiday, there is no more swimming in the river. But of course, we, us being kids was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. We're going swimming. <laughs> and I mentioned that, you know, the Soviet government gave really hard time uh, to uh, the Russian Orthodox Church, but other churches, other religions uh, had even a harder time, like Catholics, uh, Muslims, uh, Judaism, all those uh, people, those churches had even worse. Uh, for example, when uh, Soviet Union took over Western Ukraine and uh, uh, adjoined to the, the rest of the Ukrainian territory, there was a lot of uh, Catholic people there and uh, some other religions. And they pretty much like made them illegal. Like you can only be a Russian Orthodox. That's the only official religion was allowed to exist. Otherwise you weren't allowed to practice anything. And in Kiev, like my personal experience, uh, I visited several times when I was a kid. Uh, there was this uh, theater called Kukalny Teatr. It's like downtown Kiev. And I never knew that originally uh, that theater was actually a synagogue but they confiscated it uh, and it turned into the children's theater. So, you know, you have those little like dolls that uh, people yank the tiny ropes and the dolls perform. So this Kukalny Teatr, downtown Kiev, that I visited many times, I never knew there was a synagogue 
and only after collapse of the Soviet Union they actually uh, gave it back to the uh, Jewish people and it is, there is a synagogue in there again and I actually a couple years ago I went in there I met a guy uh, a Jewish person from uh, Kharkov uh, who runs a, a dating service so he provides you know uh, helps uh, Americans and Germans and other people men that are looking for Ukrainian women uh, he so he runs a dating service uh, and uh, as I said uh, we did an interview with him once uh, I posted on YouTube so he when he knew that I came to Kiev he said let's meet and he invited me we met at that sit by the synagogue and now you can also have like to have like a little restaurant there so you can have some kosher food so I had a meal with him there I had a good time and of course in the beginning of the 90s when the Soviet Union was no more um, there was a giant like huge revival of religion it became like actually quite fashionable stylish thing to have a cross you know wear the cross um, people who buy new cars would go to the church and pay the priest to have them blessed with holy water which you know for me it just totally ridiculous thing to even can't imagine but that would be you know you just see this uh, you know rich looking guys with a black mercedes and have a priest walking around and carefully splashing it with the holy water uh, churches were transferred back uh, uh, to the church so for example uh, that club in our village uh, he was given back to the church and they open it again they send a priest but uh, shortly they closed it again because the village uh, shrunk so much that there wasn't enough people to support the church and you know in, they don't have this like 10% dealio that you know you you make hundred dollars to give ten dollars to the church uh, people just bring donations whatever they have so it's hard to support the church if you have only a small congre congregation so in our it was a short-lived church so it was open for a year or two and then priest left because he's like i can't survive on this and there's just empty building but it's officially belongs to the church now also uh, there's a uh, quite a few churches that they got destroyed completely like they got blown up they found the old prints and uh, from way back when it was constructed and using those prints they built a brand new church that look exactly like old one uh, they did that in kiev uh, in padol there was an old church that got destroyed and now it rebuilt and also in moscow I'm gonna make a separate video about it, but there was a big, uh, famous uh, Jesus the Savior church that got destroyed in 1931, and it got rebuilt again in 1995 on the exactly the same location. And that the uh, kids' theater, as I said, is back a synagogue now. So it's kind of like, you know, in, like in your um, wall clock, the pendulum it was swinging one way and now it's swinging all the way back and of course right now in russia uh, church is uh, playing a huge part in the lives of people and unfortunately a lot of it uh, doesn't look good like they uh, strong supporters of putin which is you know whatever and they there's a, they have a fancy yacht and uh, then they they live like luxury life the main top priests and uh, yeah and for me it just doesn't look good they like golden decorations and other stuff so these poor old grandmas they're bringing all the they have to the native to the church and then you see this main patriarch on this big fancy boat and you know flying on the helicopter driving mercedes so uh, as I said, I'm a very skeptical person when it comes to religion and it makes me just sad to see that after so many years of struggle, of course, it was way overboard how hard they uh, fought against religion, but now it's like it came all the way back and even further back into this, like when the church is pretty much plays 
quite important part in the state institution almost, although it's supposed to be separate. Okay, so this is uh, my story about religion in the Soviet Union. I hope you enjoyed the show. As always, please don't forget to like this video. I'm always interested to see your comments, so please, uh, if you have any interesting stories or any questions, please post them under this video. I'm trying to answer them or at least write them down so I can make a new video about it. Uh, thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.